In this topic, we're going to discuss blood pressure and the pulse. So, by the end of this topic, you should be able to understand blood pressure in the arteries, capillaries and veins, what a pulse is, blood pressure and how to measure blood pressure. We're also going to discuss hypertension and factors contributing to hypertension. Blood is pumped by the left ventricle into the aorta and this causes the aortic walls to stretch. The pressure falls in the arteries as a result of this extension. The elastic wall of the aorta then recoils which increases the pressure again. This leads to regular fluctuations in the aorta and other arteries. So on this graph this explains that zigzag nature of the curve in the beginning. As blood moves further from the heart, its overall pressure decreases. This is important to prevent the bursting of the capillaries, which are only one cell thick. The decrease in pressure continues in the capillaries, so that by the time the blood reaches the venules and veins, it's fallen to almost zero, as you can see in this graph here. The return of the blood back to the heart is thus dependent on the body muscles squeezing the veins and the valves in the veins, preventing the backflow of the blood. So what is a pulse? When the wall of the left ventricle contracts, it causes the elastic walls of the aorta to stretch, creating a bulge, as you can see in this diagram here. This extended portion of the aorta wall then rebounds due to the elastic fibers in its wall. With the semilunar valves preventing the flow of blood back into the heart, this recoil action of the aorta wall causes a new pressure bulge to be created in the aorta a little further away from the heart. So you can see this in the diagram here. This process then continues along the aorta and into the rest of the arterial system. Now it's this pressure and these little bulges that occur in an artery that we recognize as a pulse. So two definitions that you need to know. A pulse is a wave through the arteries caused by the stretch and recoil of the aorta. And the pulse rate is measured per minute. So here you can see how to measure the pulse rate. Where an um, artery passes over a bone, you'll be able to feel the pulse. Right, let's move on to blood pressure. Now to function normally, mammals must retain minimum pressure of blood in their closed double circulatory system. The systolic pressure is the pressure at which the blood leaves the heart through the aorta. And this is usually about 120 millimeters Hg. The diastolic pressure is the resistance of the small arterioles and capillaries to the blood. So it's the force against which the heart works. So when you measure blood pressure, it's the diastolic pressure underneath the systolic pressure. So systolic pressure 120 over 80. So it's systolic pressure over diastolic pressure. Right, let's have a look how to measure blood pressure. The traditional way to measure blood pressure is with a mercury sphygmomanometer. The rubber cuff of the sphygmomanometer is inflated to give a pressure of about 200 millimeters Hg. This stops the flow of blood in the brachial artery. So have a look at this diagram. You can see the brachial artery in the arm. A stethoscope is placed over the artery and then the cuff is deflated gradually. So the systolic pressure is the pressure when the heartbeat is first heard as a soft tapping sound. This means that the force of the heart is now enough to push the blood past the cuff. Then the cuff is deflated further until the sound disappears. So the diastolic pressure is the pressure when the sound can no longer be heard. So it's at this point, there's no more resistance from the cuff, and the blood flows freely. So just to repeat that, the systolic pressure is when you first hear that tapping sound, 
and the diastolic pressure was when you can't hear that sound anymore. Okay, moving on to hypertension. Hypertension is a term used to describe sustained high blood pressure when at rest. It is normal for blood pressure to increase temporarily during exercise and after exercise. Now, hypertension is not always easy to define as there is much individual variation in normal blood pressure, depending on age, general health, and degree of activity. So it's the systolic pressure that changes with exercise. Your diastolic pressure rarely changes. If the systolic pressure and diastolic pressure are too high, this is called hypertension. So it indicates that the heart is working too hard. And hypertension is when the blood pressure is higher than about 140 millimeters Hg over 90 millimeters Hg. So hypertension means the heart is working too hard and the heart muscles weaken and cannot pump properly. So it's a major risk factor associated with heart disease as well as increasing the risk of atherosclerosis, strokes and kidney failures. It is called the silent killer because the disease itself has no symptoms to warn of any forthcoming heart attack or stroke. Okay, and lastly, what are the factors that can contribute to hypertension? So an increase in blood pressure may be caused in the short term by noradrenaline, causing the arterioles to constrict. Now factors that can contribute to hypertension include genetic factors, smoking, obesity, excess salt intake, and lack of exercise. And that concludes our lesson, the end.